basic water needed to swim in it. More valuable than oil. Be careful, homie, you're spilling it. Welcome, welcome, beloved community. We are back again with yet another installment of the People's Water Board Coalition's Water Wednesdays webcast. And today, as always, I'm here with my beloved co-host, Valerie Jean. Can't forget our behind-the-scenes tech person, Miss Angelica. And today, I have the pleasure of having with uh with me uh someone that I met not too long ago. He is um from Chip Rock Navajo Nation. He is a farmer, a grandpa, and an earth protector. Today we have Mr. Chili Yazi with us. We are so grateful and appreciative uh, that you took time to speak with us today. And we just can't wait to find out how we can get involved and work with you to better the earth, to better it for all people, including your people as well. And it's a short so show, so we're going to jump right into it. And my co-host is going to give you the first question. Thanks for being here, Mr. Yazi. It really means a lot for us to uh, connect with you and talk about the water struggle there um, and and see it, so that people see really how they can help out. It's a short show, so we're going to jump right in. Um, can you tell our listening listeners about the Gold King Mine Spill, where it happened and kind of the results of it? Okay, good morning, and uh, thank you for uh, having me on the show. Uh, glad to be here. The um, Gold King Mine Spill happened in August uh, 2015. Um, we are along the perennial San Juan River. We have six Navajo communities, uh, farming communities, and we have approximately... 14,000 acres of farmland, and all of our irrigation water is drawn from the river. And so the origination point for the river is up in the um, uh, mountains in southern Colorado. Um, uh, the, the Gold King Mine uh, is one that was closed like back in the late 1800s. And wow. uh, we understand there are thousands of mines, uh, uh, old mines, abandoned mines there in southern Colorado that uh, mine all, all types of uh, metal, gold, uh, lead, uh, silver, etc. And uh, because of the, uh, the way the 1872 mining law is, um, is structured, um, the mining companies were never held responsible for any kind of cleanup. So okay. what happens is that every every winter there is a buildup of water in the mountains. So there's a natural release uh, from the mountains of waters that are built up in, inside. And in uh, when the mine spill happened, um, uh, this mine was plugged up. But EPA, one of his contractors, breached that uh, bulwark and released 3 million gallons of toxic uh, chemical, heavy chemical uh, laden water into the, the tributaries of the river that we depend on for our irrigation. So when this thing happened, um, you know, there was like uh, uh, lead, arsenic, uh, chromium, uh, all kinds of uh, junk in the, in the uh, contaminated waste. And it came down river. Uh, we were fortunate uh, to be able to close our irrigation system. So the, the majority of uh, the contaminated waste did not come onto our farm areas. But, uh, you know, EPA and um, other people that keep testing the waters, they tell us it's fine now. But um, um, this happens every year. Uh, there is a, a runoff of uh, chemical-laden uh, water every year. So that's one of the, the, uh, the, 
the, the bad things that we experience here. In the mines, just there, there's no, um, there's no intention of cleaning them up or anything. You said there's hundreds of them. Thousands. We understand there's about two thousand mines that are that are uh, old mines from the back in the 1800s. Um, uh, some of the uh, sites are are, are um, uh, super fun sites. Mm. So there is some Twist. cleanup going on with the Gold King Mine. Uh, there is some re remediation that's happening. Um, so they, they're trying to um, minimize the the flow of uh, contaminated waters into our into our rivers. Yeah. But we all know it's all connected. We all know it's all connected. Yeah. So if it's even if you stopped it from getting into your irrigation system, it's still in this water, right? It, everything's all connected, yep. the water, the soil, the, the air. So you know that it's still making people sick. Is it making people sick? Um, of course, you know, with uh, the nature of the any kind of uh, health impact from these chemicals is long term. Long term, mm -hmm. so, yeah. It so lives in we your body. Lead lives you in your know. body forever, right? Right. Like if it's Absolutely. you know, if you pass that on to generations. Same with other heavy particulate metals, right? Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Awful. Um, how does this affect the water access to the residents on Navajo Nation? Um. Our Navajo Nation is, uh, is in a semi-arid uh, um, uh, country, mostly. Um, we, we, we that are along the river, we're fortunate in that we do have uh, our drinking water and our irrigation waters uh, coming out of the river. But uh, the majority of our residents uh, on the Navajo Nation are not as fortunate. We have seen uh, statistics of, uh, say, like 30 to 40 percent of people who do not have running water in their homes. And um, uh, the way that uh, industrial development, extractive industrial development has been happening here there's been a lot of contamination of our of our groundwater and depletion of our groundwater to support those uh industries so access to water is is difficult uh, we have families who will drive uh many miles many miles just to get water drinking water and for home cooking mhm mm so all the ground wells, the the wells in the ground, or is it an infrastructure problem, or the water's bad in the ground? Well, I I won't probably a little well, both. We can't say that it's all contaminated, but the, um, uh, there are because of the depletion of waters by by industry, um, there are many wells that do not produce uh, water anymore. Mm -hmm. yeah. So. So it's it's a combination of effect here. Um, uh, we we there is a part of the issue is infrastructure. Yeah. Um, but um, I think that the 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 real problem is uh, just the depletion of our groundwaters. You see it all I, over. You see corporations, right? Come in, yep. dry up the wells, dry up the aquifers, they, and then move on. Yep. Yep. It's an extractive, weaponizing way to commodify water and take it away from its natural habitat for a profit. It's horrible. And, of course, on the backs of indigenous people. Absolutely. Always, yes. always yes. the front line yep. um, of these water issues. Indigenous people and black communities, always yep. at the front line. Um, yeah. And that's intentional. These corporations yeah. know that they can go to these places and the the, the majority of people are just going to look past it. They don't want them right. in their backyard. So it's okay. That's... Those people over there, you can do that to them. It's absolutely. criminal. Yeah. It's absolutely criminal. <sighs> oh, I'm just incensed. Um, what, 
what can people do to help and learn more and and try to um to, to try to get involved it's it seems like um like there's there's something that you know that that organizing needs to be done and this and the people really need to know about it well um you know people just need to be informed about uh these these issues um you know as as i as i introduce myself as an earth defender you know um what that means to me is that uh, we need to preserve the earth in as good a condition as we can possibly can uh, for the sake of the future of our grandchildren. And as we know, there is uh, people that are dying of thirst throughout the world, people that are dying of hunger throughout the world. Yes. And uh, so it's not just a regional, local issue. You know, it's something that is global. And um, people just need to be uh, be informed about the uh, the probabilities that there that the water supply will 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 not meet the demand of humanity. Uh, through through the years and mm. and so that's one of the reasons you know why we we are are uh, adamant about uh, leaving it in the ground the uh, right. the the the, um, the the so-called resources you know because they do um, require a lot of water to 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 do their production processes yeah and uh you know the transition to clean energy is uh, is just uh critical and and very essential right. so we need people who who need to they need to understand these issues and uh the health of the earth as you know uh indigenous peoples are are very um cognizant of uh the the spiritual aspect of of uh the earth and uh, all of the the, the the essential uh elements of of life and and you know uh water we regard as a as one of our our um matrilineal uh deities and yeah. and uh, that's that's exactly what it is water is yeah. uh is sacred, you know. Water is life. Water is a um, is a is a is a sac sacred substance. We had um, a young woman uh, called Ni her name is Nyambir on um, last week, and she talked about the spiritual aspect as aspect yeah. to water, and how it's you know it, we're we're connected. It's not just a thing. It's not you know. And I've been in many um, indigenous spaces where they called water a relative. Yeah. Um, and you know, when you see things as some, if you see, if you're a part that makes it a part of you, right. Your relative, something that you love that makes you have, you know, a duty to protect it is in the spiritual aspect to it. Um, yeah. and the way that it connects us all, um, we can be on totally different side of a political aisle, but water will bring us together in a thought. And that's always been, something in the in the organizing part of it that's been important to me like we we're not yeah. just we're we're really protecting a relative right exactly. and when that first was explained to me Irish. yeah yeah and we're um we're fortunate to have the great lakes um and you know we uh nicole and i um you know we work tirelessly to protect the Great Lakes, um, along with many, many other people. And uh, because it's so precious and I, people don't understand that uh, any um, anything that uh, would happen to it, like an oil spill or anything, would be just catastrophic. It would um, be. For seven generations ahead, if not, you know, many, many more. So, yeah. Yeah. Because so many forms of contamination are not we're not able to come back from yeah right no Burn well uh, 
Yeah. Yeah, it is. A, par- a tar sands oil spill that happened in the Kalamazoo River. It was never, they still to this day find tar balls in it. And that was in 2010. You know, yeah. you still go to the Kalamazoo River and find tar balls because of a tar sands oil spill. Um, protecting the water is um, probably the most important thing we can do right yeah. now. Yeah. Absolutely. Do you, uh, go ahead. Oh, no. You to, we got just, the final question. <laughs> hey, if there were any, like, final thoughts, anything that you want to say that might perhaps spur somebody out there listening to get involved, to even if it's just to educate themselves, to understand what's going on with water, what's going on in the indigenous community. Um, is there anything you'd like to say to that? Final thoughts. Well, you know, one thing, one of my uh, advocacies is that, um, uh, you know, all all humanity, all color of man uh, were created uh, with a common uh, instructions for life. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, unfortunately, um many people have lost connection with uh, those those original instructions uh particularly the the um the white tribe uh they are such a lost people that there is this um a a um a a a culture of uh of greed a culture of hatred and yes. um, no regard for for uh, humanity, no regard for the grandchildren into the future, and um, you know very simply the the original instructions uh, uh, resonate around a simple uh, message, which is that uh, we must. Uh, take care of each other we must take care of the earth and if people begin to understand the the um the the seriousness of of that thought and to begin uh, their own uh personal um observance of of that thought and practice in their lives you know it would it that that translates to the continual um, uh, opposition to what is hurting uh, the world, what is hurting the earth, what is hurting uh, uh, humanity. Absolutely. All born with life instructions. Yes. You know, and that's such a great way to end it. So, you know, I, I have a saying that I always tell people because I meet people and they're like, oh, I have clean water or I can afford to pay my bill or I have access. And I always tell them it still affects you. There's only two ways that this affects you, either directly or indirectly. But either way, you'll be affected by the lack of water, by not cherishing that most important of relatives. Right. That life-giving relative, if you don't cherish it, it, you will be affected by it. Don't, you know, I I really want people out there, especially those people who work at these corporations that do all this damage to our, our source of life, that it will, it's not going to escape you. You're not going to be untouched by it either. Yeah. Everything's connected. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Yazi. Um, I I know that you struggled to get on this. You're a busy person. The technology issues and things you really you really went through it to be on the show with us today, and I really really appreciate you. And it was such an important conversation to have. Yes. And I'm really looking forward to uh, sharing it uh, with folks um, so that they can talk to their family about it and think about us all born with directions to if i just wonderful yeah Um, thank you direction even if we don't know which direction we're supposed to be going in we still have a purpose absolutely thank you nicole and valerie 
Thank you Thank for you very being much. Here. Yeah, we appreciate so appreciate it. it. To our listeners out there, um, try to take care of each other. Try to protect the water. And uh, yeah, try to stay afloat. Bye. Be careful, homie, you're spilling it.